Sophia here. Um, so today somebody wanted me to do a tutorial on how to do wounds with like stuff you have at home. And so all you're going to need really is some armor glue because it is non-toxic. Um, some toilet paper you can get two ply whatever you want but you want to tear the plies apart but we have some, we got some one ply with us. Like we have two ply and one ply but I just grabbed the one ply. So you're going to want to take some sheets of paper and then you're going to want to tear the edges off because you do not want any stray edges. Um, you can keep the extra parts because you might be able to use them later. Depends on what type of wound you're looking for. If you want like nasty gunk in it and stuff like that then you can keep the extra stuff. I would keep it. Um, so if you do not have almost really caro syrup works too. Caro syrup works a lot better but it gets kind of sticky and it's sweet, so probably wouldn't attract very nice. Well, probably will, will attract bugs, um, which is not good, but it dries faster. So, at the Dollar Tree, hmm, I found this, these cute little ladybug things, and I love ladybugs. And it comes with a spoon. So I put my glue in this um, on my paper plate, so I don't get glue on regular plates. I have the sheets of paper that I'm gonna, the sheets of toilet paper I'm gonna use that are bigger than the spare parts down here. So you can't, you kind of want to have a flat surface. I think you probably do sheets, but it might not stay very well. So okay. So to start off with, you want to use some primer. It primer keeps the stuff on longer and it just helps fill in any pores and stuff. I'm sorry if I look weird. I'm, I'm looking. I have a mirror set up so that I can see if I'm in view or not. I'm not used to looking at a camera. But so also you might want to put some lotion on your face just because I'm sure the glue will dry out your face and that doesn't feel good. So let's see. So first off, you're gonna probably want a foundation brush or a back of a spoon or something. Back of a spoon or something. And I'm gonna try the foundation brush. If it doesn't work then I'll use um, the spoon. But something I wanna do is um, do it in layers. Don't just put all of them on one pan because then it won't work at all. So you put on a thin layer of where you want your scratch to be. Or if you're not a scratchy, you're cut your wound. If I have a little hair getting in the way though. This also might be kind of a pain to get off, so if you don't have a lot of time, then probably not a good idea. So then you take your piece of paper, no straight edges. And you lay it down, spreading it out a little bit. And it's okay that it's white because we're gonna change the color after we're done with it. Oh. Okay. The first layer. Let's get to the skin news. Which is great. Okay. I don't even know if you guys can hear me. Okay. It doesn't have to dry fully for the first couple layers. If you want a deeper wound, you're going to want to do a couple more pieces of tissue paper. But if you do not, then you're probably going to just want a couple. The deeper the wound, the more toilet paper. And if you want a thin, like just like a measly little scratch, then. But here we go bigger, go home. Go harder, go home. Any spare parts you have, you can just take off. Okay, so the reason why 
don't want to do like one ply or um, tear them into one ply is because the um, you really do want to go small layer by small layer by small layer. So I have some bits that are down here that don't have any um, glue on them, but you can just paint over that. And be careful because I prefer carol syrup, but work with what you got, and I think people have um, more glue than carol syrup at the house. But um, you have to be careful because if you use too much, then it will fall apart. So it's either when I lose, or not when I lose, but like if you mess it up, mess it up. So I'm on my second layer, now on my third. You kind of want to go the same shape as you did have, that you already had. So. Also, you have to decide in the beginning, or not in the beginning, but whenever you want. If you want it to be an older scratch or a newer one, because if you want to go for more zombie-fied look, you're probably going to need some other things, like um, some darker browns to put around your eyes and around your temples. But if you want it to be a newer scratch, then you'll need, well, obviously, either one of them you're going to need glue, uh, not glue, uh, blood, fake blood, hopefully. Not, let's hope not real blood. And um, you can also make some fake blood. It's really easy to make. You just need some carol syrup, uh, like red Kool Aid, and cocoa powder. And it's more like a new, like not new, but like you can't just have it forever. So you have to make it every time because that can go it can go bad. But that's what I used to use. I have some fake blood. It's not that expensive. It's, you can probably get like a dollar or two dollars at Am on Amazon or if you're on the Halloween, it's around Halloween time, you can get it for cheaper, especially if it's after Halloween. But I don't have the supplies to make fake blood right now, but I'll do another tutorial on how to make that if you guys like. So if it's taking a little bit too long to dry, you can always, um, a little hair dryer, but I think this is taking pretty, it's not taking too long to dry him, so I will just leave it the way it is. Tell me for the next video if you guys are okay with the music playing on the background. If you're not, then I'll uh, we'll do it. So, as you can see, there's some wrinkles and stuff in the little paper, but it's fine because usually you'll be folding over it anyways with, after you cut it open. You want to keep your hair out of it just for the fact that since the glue is there, it will dry in your hair and then dry the hair to the face. And and then it's just a big mess later on and nobody wants to deal with that. So, so now looking back, I've tried it with a spoon before and this is my first time using the foundation brush. So I would definitely say the foundation brush really works well. So I think I'm going to do one or two more layers. You have to remember also you can't just have like a whole bunch of layers straight like you want it to blend in a little bit because it's supposed to be your skin, so you don't want to have uh, you don't want to have no you don't want to just have like some random bulge on your face. You want to have it at least blend out a little bit. Oh, that was nice. It also makes your six not your fingers. It makes your fingers really really sticky, so touching anything else is quite a hassle. Now 
think at the very end, I'm gonna put a little bit extra, just for the fact, like at the at the very, what are they called? Like the edges, I guess, because it'll help it blend out more. It'll dry, but it'll be kind of a hassle. Like it, it'll it'll take longer to dry because there will be some more glue, but it's something you want to have time for. If you don't want to have time, like if you don't have just the time to do your own wounds, uh, you can order and buy fake wounds where you just attach it with like lash glue or spirit glue, spirit gum. I can't remember what it's called. But. So I don't know how well this will stick because it's actually my first time using Elmer's glue. I'll give you guys an update afterwards. But um, I know Kara's syrup stays for a long time, but it can get kind of like. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of gets hard and it hurts. So maybe this one won't be as bad. So on the last layer, I didn't put any extra glue on the right here, on um, in the middle, because it was starting to fall apart. So you might want to keep that in mind that you don't want to have the top layer be really sticky. So I got tired of waiting and I did use the hair dryer and it dried really quickly, like probably two minutes at the most. So that's a lot better than like 15 minutes. Actually, well not 15 minutes, like 10. So at the end, you can see it's kind of not gross, but like it's like, it doesn't look exactly like a wound. So you can take your scissors and you can take off the outer parts. And to be honest, it does kind of hurt. Like, I mean, ripping um, glue off your skin normally does. So your skin might get a little bit irritated, especially mine. I have really sensitive skin. So for some people like you guys, it might not be that bad, but I'll probably get like red marks soon. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt that bad. The pain's like minimal. If I were you guys, I would really invest in some, um, like, scarred gel and stuff like that because, although it might be a little bit more expensive, but if you're, pl if, if you're planning to do this a lot, it's probably for the best. Okay, so I took off the stuff over here that was bugging me. I'm going to take this off, too. Okay. So I dried it to the part where it's firmish, but it's still a little bit, like, on the outside because I'm not going to mess with them right now. So I didn't need them done. So I don't know what's the best tool to cut it open with, but I'm today I'm going to try tweezers. So let's see how that works. Okay, so this is what I'm going to start out with. I'm going to stick the end so it's a little bit more sharp. Okay. So this is what I'm starting out with. I'm going to clip the bottom just one more time just to get it a little bit. Clean the cut. Not cleaner. Really. The messier the better, but... If the... If it won't make sense with everything else, like how it would it actually be? I'm gonna just at the bottom, I'm gonna do one little layer of this. Sort of using it as like liquid latex. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's, it's what it says liquid latex. It, um, you can do the same thing with scar wax and stuff like that, just with latex, and you. I'm, I'm gonna stop talking. So I'm going to do one little layer down here, not too much on the glue, but like, well, my brain is not working together. 
today. My brain's not working today. Um, just down past the edges, use it as, uh, to make it look more natural and to make it blend into your skin more. So, if you only have one foundation brush, that's fine. Glue comes out of foundation brushes really easily, so you don't have to worry about ruining your brushes or anything like that. It's, it's washable. I'm going to put a little bit up here. Just clean up the edges a little bit so it looks like it's actually your skin. There's not random lumps or anything. Okay, so I'm done with this now. I'm going to dry it off really quick, and then I'm going to wash my brush, and then I'll be back. So I dried up the uh, excuse me, the paper. I'm gonna take just my oh wait a minute. I'll bring it back. Never mind, I can find it. But I'll use it next time. It's just foundation costs a lot of money and at the Dollar Tree and stuff like that they have like not so good foundations and they're really weird colors, like not like blue, but they're they have a lot of yellow tones in them. Which works really good for wounds, because I like doing older wounds more, just like zombie-fied looks. But I'm fine doing fresh wounds and stuff like that. But it's just a cheaper alternative, like a, a dollar, two dollars, um, to use that instead of like an eight dollar foundation thing. But So, I put some on my hand. I'm going to go over this. I don't know how well it will work. We'll find out. So... I'm starting at the most dry parts. I don't want to mix it in with the glue. I don't want to um, mess up the drying process. There's a simple cleaner alternative, but I think that the carousel works a little bit better. So even the little flaps up here and down here, you want to color in too because it's supposed to be your skin, not for the brush. You want to blend it really nicely and into your skin. I, I haven't worn, I'm not wearing foundation today, so um, the color might look a little bit different, but I'll put on some. If you want older wounds, you're going to want to go with more browns, browns, oranges, no, not oranges, like more darker browns to lighter browns, but if you want newer wounds, you're going to want to go with more yellows and reds. Um, like bruises and stuff like that, you really don't want to forget the yellow just because it adds that nasty effect to it, which is kind of what a bruise is, nasty. Um, I think I'm going to go for more of an older, because I have a lot of, I have a cool new browns I want to try out. But if you guys would like a newer one, like I said, if you guys don't know how or just interested in it, I can show you guys. Just put a comment below so I know. Okay. So I have this colored in. I'm going to put some foundation around my face so that there's not an awkward color difference. It's not too different. It's just I have a really pink, I have really pink colored skin person. I have pink colored have pink skin. Uh, so usually foundations are a little bit, either they're either too pink for me or they are a little bit too um, yellow undertoned or blue undertoned. It, it, it's, it's frustrating. <laughs> but this one matches pretty well. It's just a little bit more yellow toned, I think, than my actual skin tone. A little tip for anybody, if you put water on your sponge before you um, 
put your foundation on, it helps spread it nicer and evener. Evener? Is that a word? No. My friend taught me that. Okay. The foundation is slowly drying a little bit. I'm going to fold the wound out so it looks a little bit more open. I keep saying that. So I have more room to work with, I guess. If you're doing an older look also, you want to color in your lips a little bit. Probably should use some um, chapstick before that, but I guess I'm just a rebel here, right? Okay. Oh, also, I put a light up there. I hope that helps the lighting. If it doesn't, go ahead and feel free to tell me. So, I have the foundation on. I'm going to get this brush. It's so... I accidentally got a lip brush, and I, yeah, it's a lip defining brush from e.l.f., but I cut it into this shape, like a angled shape. I know it's ghetto, but, well, I mean, if it works, it works. I, um, I, don't, I usually use it for this make, this type of makeup, so I don't use, so, I also have this, and it's some Revlon Beyond Natural Cream to Powder Eyeshadow. I don't really like using it just for regular makeup because it can leave creases and it's a hassle. But it's these four colors, it's messy because I use it a lot. Um, this color is good for skin color. It's the thing about it though is a little bit it's a little bit shiny. And but the the cover layer has like sprink not sprinkles, sparkles on it. But if you go past the first layer it doesn't have sparkles. And that's something that happens a lot in makeup when they don't want to sparkles in all of it, they just put on the top layer. So when you get something like this, and you, you don't notice that there's actual, actually sparkles in it, once you get past the first layer, there's usually no sparkles. So you want to use matte colors like no sparkles, I guess. So I'm going to grab some of this color right here and start putting it around. Um, Ew. I got blue everywhere, guys. The exit. Not the exit, but the end of the wound. Didn't seem to do much. That's fine. So, I got this LA Colors eyeshadow from the Dollar Tree just as a. Okay, I have to worry. Just as a. Um, for this type of makeup, because I am running out of colors. So, I'll take, I'll take, I'm going to take some of this color, it's trendy, B E P four three four two three. so. about these before, but Bin Nye products, I have one that I tore off the bottom too, but it has black, a coral color, this maroon color, I guess, and then a brown. I'm just going to drop it. Okay. Then the other one I have is called Braises, Bru Bruises and Abrasions, CK-4, and it has this brown slash red mahogany type color, a yellow, a red, and then a purple. This is awful. You guys know it's for a reason. So. Okay. So I have a sponge. It's not dirty yet. Where is so this is a sponge I use for most of my ooh, spooky makeup. So, like I said, if you want older wounds or newer wounds, either way, you're going to want a lot of yellow. So I'll need yellow. Yellow. I'm gonna put it just around the edges because not only does it work for making it look like older and grosser and like kind of bruised around because you kind of get bruises around this type of stuff, but I'm gonna switch to this one.
you're going to want, I think I'll start up the black. I'll just add a little bit and blend it out. I'm also going to use a foundation brush. It works too well. Since uh, my wound's going to be a little bit deeper because I have like, what, four or five layers? I'm going to put the black in. If you have like a less, if you have a shallow wound or whatever, I wouldn't use that much black. So I'm going to take some brown from the empty one that I do not know the name of. If anybody knows the name of this one, can you tell me in the comments so I can write it or something? bad for your skin but it does dry it out and basically what I'm saying is just make sure after you're done with this to wash it off like don't obviously don't leave it on but don't just take it off and then not do anything because it's bad for your skin so I would definitely wash your face and then lotion your face afterwards. I'm going to take the abrasions and bruises or whatever the red color use it sort out of the blood um I just kind of go along with this cut and just kind of blot it around. I usually use a sponge, so I'm going to use a sponge. Okay. This is my first talking video, so I'm really awkward, but I'm sure we'll get better over time, guys. Just a chance. I'll prove myself. So, there's something I also... Oh! I'm sure that or maybe, I'm not sure. I, I don't know yet. I'll try it though and tell you guys how if it works. Tell you guys it works. But if you use Vaseline, maybe instead of Carol syrup when you're making fake blood, maybe that will work. I don't know, i have to try it and tell you guys. But um, if you want like kind of like a nasty, greasy look on top of your wound and stuff like that, that, that Vaseline is something that will work really good for it. Not to mention, Vaseline makes your skin very soft. So I have my stage blood, my Ben Nye stage blood. It's open for some reason but it is a lot thicker so it stays where it's supposed to be but then if you get like the vampire Halloween store drugstore any Halloween mm -hmm. blood it usually just drips because it's supposed to be for like usually like right here if you're a vampire or whatever but I'm not wanting to be a vampire so if you want to use stage blood or whatever the best it's use best to use it where you don't want it to drip and then use the vampire blood where you want it to go. I'm going to get some purple on my brush. Um, for this, it's just like in a little bottle and it's really messy right now, so... But it doesn't pour out very well because it's, it stays where it's supposed to be. So if you guys want to use something to like stick in it or whatever, that works too. I'm trying to think of what I want to do today to get it out, but I have this. Base Secrets Eyeliner thing right here. It's for like eyeliner or whatever. I don't use it for eyeliner. I just so I'm gonna stick the end in here and then pull it up here. Pull it up here, and I might actually use the bottom too. But I'm gonna start with the bottom. It's a lot more gel-like. When you have glue fingers. And now touch. You can just put it on top of it if it wants to stay. Which apparently it doesn't want to stay. It has a more texture. I'll take some black too. And put it on just because the white and the
vampire blood. Um, it gets really messy when you close the top, like, you can't see, but it's all over the cap. But, that's perfectly fine because it's gonna be messy anyways. But no matter what, like, every time I close it, it just gets all over the place, so. You guys might want to wear something you don't care about. This, I, I love this shirt, but it has a stain on the back anyways. So, if you're doing, if you're playing with fake blood, you obviously want to clean it up a little bit. Or, not clean it up. Um, wear clothes you don't care about. So, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try using a spoon. Oh, wait, I'm going to clean up this one. I'm going to try using a spoon. I'm going to try to drip it on. If it doesn't work, then you guys will know. Because I'm doing it in front of you. So, You could probably use a sponge just to contour it here, but if I have this, I'm going to use it. So I have a really old palette, but I still use it for contour and stuff like that because apparently it's never ending con like this brown color. And um, You guys can do this all over your face. I, I'll have to try and do it on my cheek and tell you guys what I think. I don't think, just for the fact that if you talk as much as me, it'll probably start to peel when you smile. Or I have a habit of raising my eyebrows a lot. <laughs> so if you want to have a talking wound, like maybe I can, ooh, I can do like some teeth and like some talk. Wait, okay, Thank you guys for watching. Um, this is the final look. I'll take some pictures and show you guys what you show you guys the close-ups I guess of it. Overall, it works. Toilet paper and um, Elmer's glue works. I prefer Caro syrup, but if you don't have Caro syrup, I don't see what's wrong with using the Elmer's glue. So, have a nice night, guys. I love you. Bye.